Yo, what is up? It's JJ from 845, and today we're not talking about this gimbal from Ziyun, which is the Crane 2, but instead this one, which is the M2. For a quick size comparison, this is a Ziyun Crane 2, and here is a Ziyun M2, the Crane M2 that is. Both have the tripod feet attached, and for further comparison, uh, here is my phone, and basically the size of the gimbal itself without the tripod feet is the same size as my iPhone XS. Already attached is the Sony a7 III with the 28mm lens. And just taking out my cheat sheet here, um, the differences, of course, between these two is that with the Crane 2, uh, this thing can actually hold up to 7 pounds, whereas this one could only hold up to 1.58 pounds. I actually measured the weight of the a7 III with a 28mm, and it's basically over 2 pounds. So, um, this setup is way above the actual limit, the advertised uh, payload. But here's some footage just to show what this setup can do. The other main differences between these two gimbals is that obviously this thing has a higher payload, but it also has a feature, as I mentioned in the previous video, this focus wheel. So. Autofocus nowadays on mirrorless cameras, especially the Sony cameras, are, is really quite good. But if you wanted to attach and use the Ziyun's uh, motor, you would be able to adjust the uh, focus with this focus wheel. Um, the other thing, of course, is that uh, the plate here that the, that the Ziyun Crane 2 accepts is the Manfrotto plate. So if you're switching between one camera, um, say the a7 III, from the gimbal onto a tripod, being able to use the existing Manfrotto plate is super, super convenient. The thing that the M2 advertises is a light quick release plate. Um, and so I can actually take that out over here. So here is the, the light plate uh, that comes with the Crane M2. And as you can see right here, it is pretty small. And basically this little dovetail uh, goes inside to the quick release and there's a little uh, pin that you press. And then that way this whole thing slides in and locks. Uh, the nice thing about it again is small, but the really the big the biggest downside rather is that it's blocking the battery plate. So if you had to change batteries, you'd have to go ahead and unloosen this thumb screw, either pivot it, uh, flip the uh, the door, and change the battery, or take this out completely. And once you do that, that's just going to throw the um, the balance or rather the position of the plate. So when you do put it back onto your gimbal, you're gonna have to rebalance it again. The other big difference between these two gimbals is that the bigger gimbal it is, the bigger the batteries are. Um, and in this case, these do have three interchangeable rechargeable batteries. Um, that gives you 17 hours, which is way more than you really need for a full day of shooting. Whereas the Crane M2, again, it being compact, does not have removable batteries, um, but instead you'd have to charge this through the USB-C port. Uh, runtime, seven hours, still good for a full day as a shoot, um, but just be prepared to uh, charge in between takes or during a lunch break or something. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just balance this camera with the a7 III with the 28 mil, um, starting from the beginning as if you just took this out of the box and here's just how long it'll take for me to balance this. All right, so for the most part, I would say it's probably like 90% there. Um, you could probably fine tune it. There's a little drift or a little roll right now. Um, if that took about three minutes, I would just round this up to about four minutes, maybe five minutes if you really want this to be perfect. Um, again, the purpose of uh, balancing the gimbal uh, basically perfectly balanced is that way it has less stress on the motors. Therefore, the, the uh, gimbal can run longer um, and that way it doesn't deplete your battery for basically just uh, trying to fight the motor. But I got this again about like 90% there, I think. Um, ideally, like when you let go, you point the camera down, you let go, it'll stay. Um, so right now there's a little drift right here. Can't tell if just the bench here is just not balanced. Um, but again, for the most part, it's there. I'm gonna go ahead and boot this thing up. All right, so power new unit right here. PF mode is kind of the mode that most people use um, with a gimbal. Basically, um, just reset this. So as you move, if you were to twist uh, the handle to the left, uh, the camera will go to, will pan to the left. You twist it to the right, the camera goes right. But if you were to uh, move the handle uh, up or down, the camera will stay level to the floor. And if you wanted to reset, 
um, how the camera's level, you just go ahead and press uh, the trigger. So you press this. So for example, if I were to tilt down right here uh, with a joystick, double pressing the, uh, the trigger button here, resets this to be leveled to the floor. Uh, the next mode is L, if you can see that right here. So L mode's a lock mode. So if you were to do like a fake pan or um, without, you know, basically a slide, having L will just lock uh, the camera facing the direction that you chose. And so no matter what you do, so both left to right or even up or down, the camera stays locked. So this is perfect for the slides that most people do uh, using a gimbal. Um, and that just keeps the whole uh, rig stabilized to point in that one direction. POV modes is, a, for me at least, my, one of my favorite modes. Um, so instead of the PF mode, which, which does lock the tilt uh, that can go up or down, uh, the POV mode actually just moves whichever direction you're going. So if I'm going left, um, it's actually easier to see it here. So if I'm twisting left, the camera will pan to the left. If I twist to the right clockwise, the camera will go to the right. But when I point down, the camera will tilt down. And when I put the handle up, it will tilt up. So this is cool if you're trying to do some shots of, for example, you wanna start high from say a tree uh, or a building for an opening shot. And as you back out, you wanna be able to tilt down as you walk away from the building or from the tree. Um, this will give you that effect where you can control uh, the tilt axis um, while keeping things stabilized as you move. Double clicking um, is this mode called Go. Go just does a, a very quick uh, whip pan. So if I were to go left, it uses the motors at the highest. Uh, the last mode that I won't show is this mode called V. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just disable this and I'll just explain what this is. Uh, so for V mode, it actually just means uh, vortex. Uh, so what happens in this mode is that the camera itself will just, the gimbal, will tilt the, ca uh, the camera all the way up to the sky and then you can use a joystick to just do like 360 uh, pans. So hence vortex because the whole camera is just spinning uh, effortlessly and, and stabilized until you choose to stop. Also included with the Ziyun Crane M2 kit is this phone holder. So it uses tension to hold your phone. Um, and basically you would put your phone here and using the thumb screw from the light plate, you would go ahead and attach this onto the gimbal. You would balance it out. Um, and therefore you can use your gimbal uh, rather your phone with your gimbal. And so here's some footage um, with my iPhone XS. So is this unit worth it? Compared to the other gimbals out there with a lighter payload um, with, uh, for example, the Crane 2 can hold up to 7 pounds. Uh, the Ronin SC can hold up to, I believe, 4 pounds. This one is only is really limited to, I would say, under 2 pounds. So that 1.58 pounds that it's advertised as its payload does have a little leeway since this whole thing itself weighs about 2 pounds. Again, you don't get the full flexibility. The viewfinder doesn't clear the actual gimbal arm um, right over here. But if you're using this for, again, even a lighter or smaller camera, say the ARX100, um, in, even when shooting 4K, you can still get really, really good footage with this, um, as proof with my iPhone XS. Coming back to, is this thing worth it? Honestly, for the amount of gimbal work that I do, which is basically, I would say even like 10% of my actual work, I would say so. Because I traveled with a Crane 2 um, with this exact camera and lens um, when I went to Japan for, for the uh, MLB All-Star game, and that worked perfectly fine. Um, I actually was using that setup for the majority of, of the time there. So the only problem that I have is that the, the battery is not replaceable. So during the shoot in Japan, I did have to replace my battery once, but then again, I was there for about 10 days and I only had to change the battery once because the battery just, you know, it's just so efficient. For here, the only thing that I would recommend is just having a power bank, a USB-C power bank on standby. So in between shoots or during breaks, um, again, you can just charge this thing uh, and you should be good to go. For most people, people want stabilized shots and you're only using it for such a short time of your actual piece. So in my opinion, 
this Kimball just does, I would say, about 90% of the things that you need it to do. If you need it to do a crazy roll of the camera, you know, doing like this all the way around, then sure, this thing probably is not what you're looking for. Um, I would go for the Ronin that, that does a, a really terrific roll, um, especially with a higher payload. But if you know, you know, some people have a, dedica a dedicated gimbal camera when they're on a shoot, especially for an event, and if you're sticking with, say, a smaller cam like this, or even the A6500 or A6400, which that in itself is even more perfect to fit this because of um, of it being lighter, then then that just fits the bill. Um, I don't think you need a higher uh, capacity payload of a gimbal, especially if you know that you're working with a small mirrorless camera. And honestly, if you're using your phone as well and you know how to color grade it, um, you can also get away with the footage um, using your phone because that's what I did um, for one shot uh, during the MLB uh, sizzle that I did. So I hope this overview slash quick mini review was uh, helpful for the ZU and Crane M2. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you guys. Peace.